In this exercise, we're going to take an introductory look at the uh, at the planar tracker tool in Nuke. It's a relatively new feature. Um, it's been uh, adjusted and adapted for uh, for Nuke uh, 9, so it does contain a few differences. But as we haven't covered it before, there's no need to go into previous versions. Uh, in this exercise, we're going to do a fairly standard procedure, which is to uh, if I just zoom in here, we've got some uh, we've got some photographs on the wall. Uh, we're going to do a, a corner pin operation and uh, and pin a replacement into this into this picture frame. So if we just scrub around this, we can see that it's quite a, a significant uh, camera move within this shot. So let's start by applying the node. So I'm going to select my read node and I'm going to introduce a planar tracker. Okay, and this looks very familiar. It looks like a normal roto node, and it pretty much is. If we if we look at the if we look at the the panel, it has all the attributes of a roto node. The only difference is is that as an additional tab called tracking. And the other thing that's that's different about this is that when the planar tracker nodes applied, we also get this toolbar across the top of the viewing area, which basically contains all the controls, which we'll go into in a second. But before we do that, we'll just take a little look at the at the tracker tab in this um, in in the in the node to start with. You can see in here that this is where we set the general parameters for the for controlling the track. Um, and also we have some controls down here that we can open up uh, which is for corner pinning which allows us to actually control the splines a little bit. Um, we also have a layer based system here which we'll be getting acquainted with uh, in this uh, in this exercise and with other planar tracker exercises uh, which essentially is where we uh, place the splines that we ultimately track. We've got a, view, a, a variety of options we can track on RGB, we can track on luminance and things like that so we do have all the channels um, what's um, we can track on individual channels, etc. Uh, one of the things that is uh, that is quite uh, good about this uh, about this planar tracker is that it uses uh, it uses pattern matching algorithms. So it's actually very very good in the way that it attaches itself to the uh, to the plate footage. Okay, the the toolbar. I'll just pull this back just so we see the full range of the toolbar. Okay. The toolbar um, is essentially how we, um, where we use, uh, where we control the, uh, the the track. So it's really made up of three sections. The first section, which I I would say sort of goes from about here to here, is um, is really concerned with playback controls. Uh, um, the middle area. Is really about how we can um, how we can apply sort of vignettes, sort of overlays and things, which allow us to look at our track and also make minor adjustments to finesse elements like uh, like corner pins and things like that. Um, over here, we've got some tools which relate to keyframing, which allow us to change the shape, uh, etc., and the position of our spline, and uh, and and essentially it puts keyframe in that allows us to do that and interpolates between the two points. Um, and then the final part here is referencing the layer down here and then we have some options here which basically determine uh, the way that we distribute the uh, the tracking data to the secondary uh, secondary nodes that we may for example merge on top such as in this case where we're merging uh, an image to replace the photograph so let's get started just drag over to uh, to the first frame and make sure that our uh, our planar tracker node selected. You can see that when the uh, when the plane when the planar track nodes applied, we automatically get this layer introduced. And then when we apply a spline, in this particular case, I'm just going to use a rectangle because it's a very simple process. I'm just going to draw a very crude rectangle around that. Uh, in fact, I'll just no, I won't. Um, because um, because it doesn't really need to be any more any any more sophisticated than this. There obviously are some tracks that would need a more complex spline, but this is fine for my purposes. And you can see that that spline gets dropped into this layer. It's essentially this layer which interacts with all these tools rather than the individual spline. So I'm just going to rename this. It's good practice to do that. So I'm going to call this picture frame. 
just so we can actually see it. I don't really need to do anything in, in this particular panel at this time. I just need to get the thing tracking. So I'll just try and, uh, and zoom this out so we can see a little bit more of the real estate. And then into my tracking tools, here they are. These, these are the options for tracking, tracking forward, tracking forward one frame at a time, tracking backwards, tracking backwards one frame at a time, etc. I'm on the first frame, so I'm going to be tracking forwards. So I'm just going to hit the track to end. And you can see the spline following that uh, follow following that that win that picture frame quite nicely, and that's the track completed. And if we just take a look at that as we scrub through, you can see that that's following the that's following the the picture frame quite nicely. Okay, so our next our next task then is to is to assign the area that the corner pin is going to apply to. Now, obviously, we want it to apply to this inner part of the uh, of the picture frame. So, to do this, we are going to use the middle part of these tools, which are these overlays. This button here places a planar surface over the top, and this is essentially our corner pin. These will be our uh, our upper left, upper right, lower right, lower left, etc., uh, that our corner pin will work with. And this button allows us to uh, to correct the plane, which is essentially what we need to do. We need to skew it to fi fit in. So I'm just going to do that now. So I'm just going to drag this down. I'll get them roughly in position, and then go in and refine. If you notice as I do this, the the motion path that was defined during the tracking process reconfigures itself to align to the new position, and that's based on the reference frame, which is the first frame in this particular case, because that was the frame from which I I drew my initial spline. Okay, if I just zoom in a little bit now, I can just refine this. Uh, there's quite a bit of motion blur as you can see, so I'm not going to concern myself about being too perfect, other than just to get it as, as close as I can. Okay, that looks alright. Okay. So just before I move off this, I'll just zoom out a little bit and I'll just apply the grid. Uh, and the grid is useful, although there isn't too much sort of perspective change in this particular case. The grid is actually quite useful for, for just checking the track to make sure it's adhering. Okay. So we're pretty much ready to apply this track now to our secondary layer. Now in this particular case, I've just got myself a checkerboard into position. Uh, if we just double click it so we can see and I've assigned uh, a 460 by 640 uh, format to it uh, I've come up with something that broadly matches the aspect ratio of the image clearly 460 by 640 isn't particularly high resolution but it's adequate for what we're doing in this particular case I could be much more precise but for what we're doing it's not important so the way that we assign this tracking data is by using these buttons here so I just need to just pull this out to the side a little bit so we can see this so this is referencing the name of the the name of the layer that I defined down here if you remember I renamed it picture frame and that's what this is referencing uh, officially we or technically we could have multiple layers within this um, each with their own splines etc so we need to define the spline that we're going to that we're going to use so I just need to make sure that checkerboard selected and when I've and once I do that, I can come into this and I can define what I, exactly what I want to do in terms of um, in terms of tracking. So what I'm actually going to apply is a 2D corner pin absolute. Okay. So let's apply this now, and we can see now in the node graph that a green a green uh, line has been drawn we've got a we've got a new node on here now called the corner pin node and it's connected by this green line which is essentially an expression which is uh, which is transferring the tracking data from this roto and applying that to the corner pin uh, by choosing corner pin uh, to the absolute it just means essentially that the that the image will will fit itself absolutely into these boundaries okay so we're still not seeing our checkerboard. Uh, in order to do that, we need to merge it. Well, this side is our A side, so we can uh, we can select our corner pin and type M to bring up a merge. By doing that, it's already connected on the A side of the uh, of the node, and then we can connect the B side to the roto, and then connect our viewer to the merge. 
and if we now just turn off our uh, our, our splines uh, or our, our guides we just take a look at this we can see that that's following on quite nicely I'm just going to actually cancel out all my uh, all my node properties so that we can uh, so we get rid of all the overlays and we just scrub through this I'll just try and zoom out a little bit so that we can see this in uh, in place we can see that that follows really nicely um, a much more satisfactory uh, track than we could have easily have achieved with a uh, with a feature tracking system um, and relatively straightforward and relatively easy to use so that's pretty much an introduction to the planar tracker uh, there are a few more things that we can do with it but uh, but that's a pretty good introduction okay hope you found that useful